guys. So today I want to publish a comprehensive guide, the ultimate guide, the one-stop shop for all the European War 7. But you can check on the card above, you can see the link to my playlist with all the guides in, for, because each guide is far more specific. This is more meant to be a first step for beginners to give you a holistic view of the game and some good uh, pointers. And it is also dedicated to all the Android players that I'm sad that uh, you still didn't get the chance to try this fantastic game. Hopefully it will be released soon. The date is not being communicated yet. Check on the EasyTech Facebook or my website page for update. I'm sure that is a matter of weeks now. I also want to remind you that I'm offering subtitle in many languages. You can activate it on the caption option in the video. And uh, there you go. So starting as a basic pointer for beginners. When you these type of games really pay back when you log in daily and you collect the daily rewards. So what you do, first of all, you click on the crown. These are all the, the shop day in up. In my case, I purchased a Richard the Lionheart, which is the, by far the best general in the game. And with him, I get the privilege of 50 medals per day. This is really great. You see, in 11 hours, you can collect again. By clicking here, you will, cl you will claim the privilege. Then on the crown, that's the whole shop. Here you have the other general for in-app purchase. You can get, um, you can purchase other uh, um, package, but the first one is free. So every time you see in 11 hours you can collect, and normally you get 5,000 coins, mercenary orders, which I will show you later on what you do, and uh, a heraldry. Okay, that it pays back. Shop you can buy a bunch of items with medals, not with real money. With real money you can buy medals. We go back, then the screen, you see this is still the beta, so here what is written coming soon, we should expect the siege battle, it's another set of scenario battles, I guess destroying uh, castles, I believe something along those lines, and then you have campaign and conquest, <coughs> let's start with the conquest, I still haven't kicked the conquest, so I will uh, take a stab uh, soon, but here you get the tutorial. You can play. So I also recommend you to watch my tutorial online. Okay, now I'm stuck. And here on the battle reports, it will be a recap of all the conquests you have accomplished. Each conquest also trigger rewards. And you will see when you click on the conquest, you can see the triumphs. And if you do the one star challenge, complete barbarian invasion with the one star nation, you get all these benefits and so on. Gears, medals, mercenary orders. Okay, then let's go to the campaign. I always recommend to begin with the campaign <clears throat> that allows you to unlock a few generals, a few rewards, and then it will make you more competitive. But again, we're still in our daily login mode. So what you do here, <clears throat> you can click on the ads. Every day you have six ads. You watch them and you get uh, rewards. So again, a nice quick way to build uh, this. Then also you have the daily quest, which is very simple. You, like in any easy tech game, you just have uh, several slots. You put your generals in, and after a certain amount of minutes, you collect your reward. Again, nothing to do. You just do it and you let it run. But the game needs to be open, otherwise the timer is a stop. Then let's look into the headquarters. Here, you normally you see whenever there is an action, you will see a red dot. Like you see on item, you have a red dot. You will see on headquarters a red dot. And normally this dot will, uh, will trigger that there is an, um, some action you can do with the general. But also, when you go to the headquarter, you will see, for example, on Nexus, you see this yellow arrow. That's the rank. So there is an opportunity to upgrade the rank. Let's step back a moment. When we look at the general, you have the face. Then here the rank. And there are like 21 plus 3, there are 24 ranks, up to general 3. 
start from the canvas one. Again, you can check in my general guide for more details. And with the rank, when you upgrade, you gain capability points. And after a certain threshold, you unlock an extra skill slot. And also after a certain threshold, you unlock the number of units you can carry. And I will talk about that later. On the bottom, you can have two equipment pieces. Try to have equipment and boost the specialty of the general. On the right side, you have five capabilities. Morale, range capability, which is archery, applying to both infantry and cavalry archery. Cavalry, that applies to both charge and melee cavalry. And infantry, which applies both to melee and counter infantry. And again, we'll talk about the units later on. And administration, which generate resources during the campaign and reduce the policy cost. Again, this is mostly applicable for conquest mode. And you see with the plus and minus, you can eventually redeploy the capability. In this case, I cannot because they're already assigned and I have zero capability points. Then at the bottom, you see the skills. In general, has a range between uh, two to five. Yes, uh, and you will see what they are. Normally, it's good to have generals which have uh, focus skills pointed to the same specialty. Rather than have a versatile general good at everything, it's better to have general good in one area. So he has a counter infantry expert, force march, force march, plane commander, and logistics. So the skills are not very consistent, but at least he's pointed to infantry. And so I specialize him in infantry. His capability is 54 because I got him the equipment that improved the capability by 10. And then this is a special equipment for Caesar, but still even another general, he has some benefit. Indeed, the generals, the elite one, they have an additional item. So that's my elite general here. And this item is, this is a unique skill, applies only to the general, and something you should pay attention. Whenever you have a general with this, this applies to the elite, whether in up or non in up. It's a big plus. In this case, for Richard, he is the best cavalry general in the game, no matter what anyone will tell you, believe in me. When he gets to level 9 immortality and is leading Knights Templar, he does a damage increase of 20%. I put him the Nisean horse, which boosts capability but also cavalry tactician level skill by one, which he has, so I boost another 7% damage. And then there's a unique equipment by Richard. You unlock this equipment in the Triumph, which I will show later, and over time you can click Enhance, and if you have this Mithril plus coins, you're able to boost it to the additional level, more level, you see you boost the other skill until you transform a true monster already has a capability of, uh, of cavalry of 87, okay? No other general has that. He has emperor title, which is max, and I upgrade into general three, which is max. So I produce a true animal, cavalry tactician, pole arm mastery, in case you put it in as a, uh, a cavalry which has the lances, you would see in the unit, and also siege master. So I always use him with the, with the gear siege like a catapult, to destroy cities. And here are the Knights Templar, which is this unique specialty unit. These are mercenaries, charge cavalry. And so with this, now you already has a 10% amplifier in its benefit. And indeed, in the headquarters, you see next to the general, <coughs> you can see here, maybe we do on this one, that sucks. You have a plus sign and you can add units. Many units are still unlocked. You cannot add them. To unlock them, you need to collect a certain amount of cards. You see, if you want to recruit, you need to uh, unlock it with a certain amount of uh, cards. For example, you need at least uh, 10, uh, 200 swordmen to unlock it the first time, 10 or 30, depending on. But here, for example, this unit is available and has a red dot, which means you can possibly upgrade him. So I need to go in the unit screen. You click upgrade. And here there's an opportunity, but I need the two more units to upgrade it. 
So it was not available, was not refreshed, I guess. But for the other, see if you want to upgrade, you need the 30 units. Yeah, that's it, not 10. My mistake. Yeah, all the one, the first time you need the 30 units to unlock that unit, and then you need additional units to move them to the upper level. For example, see Legion Brigade, I already upgraded to level 4. And if I upgrade to level 5, I have a benefit of boosting the defense. 24, but I need the four more units to do that. Um, my advice, skipping on the unit, is uh, don't spend uh, too much money upgrading the lower units. Although the only benefit is when you when you upgrade the soldiers, you you gain a triumph points, which later on you can use to claim a bigger reward. That's the only reason. But be mindful of your resources. Prioritize unlocking the higher order ones. So we go back to the quarter just to explain again that <clears throat> Richard, because of his uh, high rank, he has uh, three military units. But Belisarius, he has a lower rank, and so he only has two slots. When I click on his rank, see he's only lieutenant one. <clears throat> Is only Brigade Commander 3. If I make a Lieutenant 1, I will unlock the third slot. So I need three more Heraldry points, and I will upgrade. That's important. You do this as part of your daily routine. You log in, you get all the claims, the reward, but then you check your headquarter. And it's very important that you prioritize your investment. In my case, I prioritize getting the Heraldry because I need Belisarius to give me a third unit because this is my second best general for now. And so it's a limiting that gives only two units. Currently, I'm using Etius, a silver one, which has a three slot. And that's why I can jump from the headquarter to the shop. In the shop, you see, I see an herald, I will immediately purchase. The shop refreshes every six hours. So in six hours, I may be able to buy one more herald, provided I have enough coins. That's why these privileges are useful, because they give you really uh, the resources to invest. I really don't recommend you purchase general. I mean, except for the in-app, the Richard or uh, Charlemagne, there are great ones. And also, I mean, Charlemagne only gives you the privilege, an extra general slot, which is not very useful. The other one that is good because the privilege is Attila, okay? because Attila gives you the double battling resource, which is really good. Okay, I apologize if I jump here and there, but I'm trying to give you the best guide, not the least confusing one. The last point, before we move out to the general, I want to explain, is that, <clears throat> see, the general has five different capabilities. But to each capability, the general gives its multiplier based on its skill set, really, and based on this and based on the items, of course. So clearly, because of the type of general, Richard gives the highest coefficient of multiplier to cavalry. That's why I say it's a cavalry general. You can still put on an archery. It will still do good. It will still give you a 40 output. Plus, if he has any skill that improves the archery, for sure the, the siege master applies to any specialty. But... Um, you can also put, for example, a mixed army under Richard, two cavalry and archery, and so it will give that slower multiplier to the archery unit. Personally, I specialize my troops, so Richard always am only charge cavalry. That's it. I mean, you can mix a charge and melee, which have different benefit. but if I can, I put the Knight Templar. I would be stupid not to take advantage of that benefit. Okay? Likewise, in Belisarius, once I unlock them, I will only put the Legion Spearman, so I get the benefit of the 20% boost once I get to the level. Then, let's look at the campaign parkour. So you will start with the tutorial with four missions. Very easy, you get quickly benefits and a general. And then you have a mix of campaign chapter and challenges. So the first one is the last of the Romans. It's eight uh, uh, chapters, or eight uh, missions. And you see the red one, when you do them, you can see the, the rewards. Well, now I've done it, so the rewards, uh, when you repeat, are not the same. 
But normally after you do a red campaign, you unlock a general. This is like a, uh, a, the mission is a bit longer, a bit more complicated, but you get the bigger rewards. I believe every time it's a general, I may be wrong, I, <clears throat> but for sure the red ones are more complicated. And then they are interspersed by the hero par uh, trail, I, I believe it's called. That the, I'm pretty sure the easy tech will rebrand this uh, once the beta is uh, uh, removed. So this is like the challenges in the old European war. And uh, in this case, the challenge is made of uh, um, six steps, although each one has a stage one and stage two, so it's really 12 steps. They lead to rewards. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get Attila, but uh, you get to play that. Um, then the second chapter, Rise of Byzantium, is 10 missions. I've already completed the first uh, eight. So now let's see the rewards of number nine. Yeah, you don't get always a general, but you get some uh, sizable reward. In this case, you get Excalibur, which is a unique attribute of King Arthur, plus a bunch of medals. I mean, it's a, it's a sizable, it's a sizable benefit. While the last one you don't get much. And then once you unlock, for example, Rise of Byzantium, you unlock after Siege of Rome, you get Belisarius, which is a great general. And so with Belisarius, then you can do the, you unlock the Spear of Byzantine. So I believe it will be always the same. So here you will get, after you do the, the third one, which is the the establishment of the kingdom, you will get King Arthur, unless you have to purchase, let's say. Normally when you unlock, you need the king to do it, but possibly with the in-app general, you can only buy them to get to play. And then we continue a border crisis, Viking invasion, and you see every time you have the equivalent, this is for Alfred the Great, Macedonian dynasty. And then here you have the Pharaoh treasure, this reminds me of the World Conqueror exercise. There are also 50 like there. And I guess it will be progressive difficulty. I already, uh, it's still locked. So to do the Pharaoh treasure, does it say, I guess you will have to do complete stage six. And then here from stage seven, they're still not released. So I guess for now, as far you can go is stage six, which is already a long way. But overall, you have a 14 uh, chapter of campaign, and every campaign is uh, normal and hard. Okay. Even the Scourge of Gods is uh, normal and hard despite the stages. Okay, interesting. So, and again, more and more, other 14 here. So, it's a long, it's a long playing. That's great. And as I said, you will get so many free general. If I look again in my headquarter, I purchased Richard and I purchased Valence as it was a silver general because I wanted the range general up front and it's been a very good purchase. So in terms of general pass, really if you can invest in the Richard in, in up, but then start to look at my guide for bronze or uh, silver generals. And there are a few recommendations, they're quite cheap. Um, these are a couple of good starting points, but don't buy many. Valence is a very good one. Lupicinos, you get it for free from uh, Rome, is a decent uh, range. Um, and Etius, also you get it uh, up front for free, and it's a good uh, infantry. So you need really a cavalry to buy. Then, as we go in the units, there are six uh, specialty. As I said, melee infantry, counter, melee cavalry, charging, range, and range cavalry. What is important in the game is that every unit does its best against a certain type. You just need to memorize it or write it down. Okay, so for example, well here it doesn't show, but if you click on the right the handbook, you get the encyclopedia of all the armies. You see, depending on the army, if it's one, two, or three stars, they get more or less unit. Wessex is a poor nation, so you only have level, up to level three. <clears throat> The army are classified in type, melee counter, melee cavalry, but also in level. 
So level one is swordmen. If you click, these are the worst players. And skilled in combat and comparable with professional soldiers. When you go level two, it's slightly better. Level three is slightly better. And always you see always the, the dimension of every unit is the attack, the defense, the counter, mobility. And how much population they eat. You start with the population balance. If you are below that balance, you generate the resources in every turn that you can use to build the armies to upgrade the cities and castles. If you are negative, you don't generate resources, so make sure you, you keep an eye. And then the first uh, square below the unit always tell you, always, which against which unit they are best. And this is the same for the whole uh, unit type. So for all the melee infantry, they are best against range infantry, so uh, against the uh, archers. Okay, so if you are in battle, you will see in some of my missions, I always check what, what army I am. You can quickly see the army type by looking at the top left corner. You see there's cross swords, that's melee infantry. So melee infantry, we have a chance, always put them against the archers. Okay? And then they have the second skill is always about to reduce the damage. And then some, they have three or four skill on top. Okay? This one, because it's basic, they only have two skills, as you can see, out of the four available. Then also, how do you recognize the unit type? Apart from the icon, you will see that melee always have a sword or axe, while counter infantry, they always have a pole. See, these are counter infantry. And if I click, they are best against charged cavalry. Okay, so when you, put, when you are attacked by cavalry, you can put a counter infantry against them. They go nuts. Okay, this one instead is an archer. You see in the top corner the symbol of the archery. And the archer they do best against counter infantry and melee cavalry. It's a bit confusing to remember all. So find a way for some shortcuts. But it's also um, understandable because the counter industry they have long poles, so it's hard to get in close range, but from far you can do damage. And many cavalry because they don't have the lances, they just have swords. <clears throat> then you see the cavalry with the sword, these are melee cavalry. The scout is the weakest. But again you will see the melee cavalry is specialized against range cavalry, which means cavalry with archery. And then the next group, you see this, they have lances. So I click on the top left, you see a horse with a lance. This is the charge cavalry. Again, this unit is the weakest among all. It is an attack of 64 and 80. But again, when you want to see against which unit they are most effective, they are most effective against the melee infantry. And again, it's logical. Melee infantry, they only have sword. So they cannot reach far. And they, while the lances are in a far range. And so can be killed. Then see here are more archers and then there is the last one is the ranger cavalry that the Vesex doesn't have. Very few uh, army have a range cavalry. Not even England I believe has it. Look how beautiful are these units. England is a richer ratio so they, up, they have even a level 6 unit, the musketeer in the melee infantry but you see it's always the same. They do damage against counter and uh, melee infantry. This is an, uh, sorry, that's a uh, range unit you see from the angle. It's something to be careful in this uh, book because they don't put always the same unit type on the same row. You need to, and musketeer, you know, you could have been also melee infantry based on the weapon, but actually it's an archer. And here you have all the nations. You see again a poor nation, the Frankish, then France is rich. Let's see. They don't have also range cavalry. Beautiful, this one. Holy Roman Empire. Vikings. Yes, and so the Roman Empire is a range cavalry, so it's not very common, but here you go. And again, the, the biggest damage is the same as the range infantry against the counter infantry and melee cavalry. So you can always consult the handbook Particularly if you do conquest, you choose a nation, or when you do a campaign, every campaign you have, a, you start with a certain nation. And so here you can see the various unit types available to plan. 
Okay, so the last of the Roman, you assign the Roman Empire. So you go in the handbook and you scroll until you find the Roman Empire. You don't have all the kingdoms here. You have the kingdom that you're facing campaign. When you face more kingdoms, they will appear in the handbook. Okay, normally in the last of the Roman, you don't get to get the level four plus uh, legion. You need to upgrade the city to get them, and it takes time. So that's about the units. Now we said that we can unlock them. How do we unlock? You go to the item, and again, you see a red dot. It means that there is an action you can do. And see, this is what I collected so far. I have a very high inventory of Quintain, but don't sell them because they will always make you sell at a very cheap price. Keep them. I'm sure over time you will have opportunities to upgrade. So the item, <clears throat> I have a guide specifically on the item. I will not go into all the details, but are to upgrade your military units, your general, or to collect units. That's the important one. You have the mercenary order. When you get 10 of them, you can recruit units. And the drawing that allows you to collect war gears. Here are all units are available, which I can use them to upgrade the equivalent. I have 11 units, so I could upgrade the garrison spearmen. Unfortunately, I've already upgraded them. So for the next upgrade, I need to reach chapter three. Same for the what, raiders, while the others have less than 10, so no, nothing to do. And I have a couple of items that I don't have a general yet to give them. When you go in the world gear, you see there are two types, puzzles and non-puzzles. Basically, every time you get 10 pieces, like in this case, the caltrop, you can click craft and you create a caltrop. So now I have, you still have one piece, you see now it's X2, I have two units which means I can apply twice on my armies during the campaign. <clears throat> during the campaign, you can apply on the same army different gears, depending on the situation. I guess once you apply the new one, it will erase the old one, so you cannot accumulate. But it's pretty smart. You know, let's assume that uh, you are facing an infantry <laughs> army. You put the caltrop, you reduce the damage you receive from infantry by 10%. This one increases the health of every turn, so useful if you have a general with low health, with a low number of units, like in my case is Belisarius. We should attack a city. The siege tower is the best. It gives a 30% boost to the, the rampart reduction. While the catapult is the next one, is only 25. And then you have the rhino, which is a hybrid. It ignores the 20% of the rampart reduction. Now, there's something issue with the English of easy text sometimes, which is not very clear. But anyway, 20% of the damage reduction more. And then you have the battery RAM, which is 20%, and so on. Similar for the gears, you have gears against cavalry, range, and infantry. And then you have ships. Without ships, you cannot go in the sea. The basic transport ship will, will give you um, which is uh, uh, free, it will give you just transport, but then you have a salt ship and uh, caravan and the Viking long ship. This is free if you have pre-registered in the game. Okay, so that's the item. And then, yeah, as I showed before, you can go to the shop and purchase depending on your need. It's very easy to buy like crazy. Go and shop your friends, so be very selective. You may find, for example, a unit that you desperately try to get to 10 to upgrade it or to 30 to unlock it. So that would be a good one to purchase. And also maybe you want an extra gear drawing <clears throat> to get to 10 and purchase, or you want to upgrade your general. But again, have a list of the two or three items you need, and then check the shop because every six hours it refreshes. And then we go to the recruit screen. So here is where you can recruit units and war gear. You can, basically you see the acquisition rate, it tells you that if you buy 10, you will get five, so 50%, uh, normal, at least, <clears throat> four, four, medium, and one advanced, at least. So these are higher level 
troops or high level gear. That's why I always recommend you to wait until you get 10 so that you get a guarantee of one advance and four medium. If you do only one, it's just a probability. You may be lucky, but maybe not. On the top, you see I only have one mercenary order, so I need to wait a while. While for the war gear, I have uh, also one, so I need to wait. But just to show, I can show it to produce. You draw the card, and then you, you can turn it, and again, go to Dromon, piece of puzzle. I need the 10 of them to get one Dromon unit. And now I get to zero. Okay, pretty easy. But now I get an item, and I see I got lucky, because I got exactly 10 Dromon, and so I will craft. And I got this Dromon boat. In naval battle, retail original 80k strength deal extra 5% troops damage to the enemy with each attack. Okay. Last thing I wanted to show you, to complete the guide, I also, in my guide list, you will find the combat tips and more details on the gears and on the military units. I wanted to show you the honor and the triumphs. So on the triumph, these are all the awards. See, if I collect 10 generals, I get this. Uh, if I upgrade the general rank 20 times, if you upgrade the general title, complete the daily quest 45 times, and so on. So keep an eye on those, because sometimes you are just uh, uh, very close. 25 meta recharge, so that one I didn't do. And there are the trials I've done. And then the, the other two I want to show you, the honor. So you have two types of honor, honor of soldier and honor of quest. Honor of soldier, you obtain it by upgrading the soldier's level. As I show you in the unit, you upgrade it, you build up. So that's why that's one of the benefits of upgrading the unit, because you you get, okay, at the beginning, the prize are not very exciting, 50 medal, but they run fragment. But then, see, here you get the Richard, unique uh, uh, immortality <clears throat> um, item. So for me, that was imperative to get. And then you can check what's available in the future. Not much, although from time to time, you get the good items, like here. No, sorry, it's not the long sword. Yes, this one. If you have Genghis Khan, you have the Bow of Stars. And here, Legion Spearman, Elisman, that's important because I have Belisarius. That's a, a spirit for me to get. <clears throat> and then Teutonic Assortment. That's the normal reward. And then you have the advanced reward where you have you get Julius Caesar as one of the advanced rewards. Okay, so I'm gonna go. You can pay money. This is in but it's roughly fifteen dollars to unlock all the rewards. But I mean it's already the game is very generous, so don't spend too much money. I think the best money, as I said, buy the in-app general in the beginning. You get, together with the general, 2,500 medals and 50 medals per day for the rest of your life. That's already priceless. Last is the bond. This is not super clear, but I, my speculation is when you get two generals, which are from the same historical period, like Justinian and Theodora, I believe it was his wife, <coughs> if you have both, you get to unlock Rear Captain, Centurion 3. Yeah, if you get them, this general, both, and they both get to Captain, Rear Captain 1, Centurion 3, or General 1, you get these resources in every round. Same, now Belisarius, you see, I already unlock him. If I get Narcissus, I unlock this bond couple, and it gives me Defender of Counter Infantry Under Command plus 10, Defender of Counter Infantry Under Command plus 10, and general, if it's General 1, Counter of Counter Infantry Under Command plus 10. Okay. And then you can see, so you see the king in the round table, you see Arthur, his wife, Guinevere, and Sir Lancelot, they give you. Now the Viking leader, I got Ivor, if I get these other two, but they're not very good general, I will get those benefits. So you can plan it around. You see the, the Mongol? Okay, one I can actually look at is clearly I get 
Richard I already. So if I get the Philip and Frederick, what do I get in exchange? I get the charge cavalry plus 10, ATK of charge, ATK stands for attack, by the way, or charge cavalry under command plus 10, and charge of charge cavalry plus 15. Okay, so something for me to consider for my own plan if I get. So keep an eye on bond, think about your general path, decide, look at my general reviews, so you can really decide where you want to put the big money, where you would put the elite generals, the gold, and then you have all the other three. And based on that, keep the bond into mind. Okay, so this concludes. It's a long review, but it really I thought for the beginners, I wanted to give you a one-stop shop where you can get all the info in one place. For advanced courses, you go in my playlist. Again, it's here, in the card, to get more specialized knowledge. And so if you like this video, please support me, click like, and if you didn't subscribe to my channel, subscribe, I would appreciate it. Take care.